Ray, we are back. We're back. Thank you very much. I'm Mike Buchert with the Oklahoma City University. I'm the director of long range facility planning. We're involved on all con design, construction, and planning for projects $2 million or greater on all OSU and A&M campuses across the state. Been there for 11 years. We've done over a little over a billion dollars worth of projects. Um, you pay state sales tax. You pay state income tax. Not one single penny of your tax dollar went towards any of these projects. We got about 180 million from the lottery to do projects. We got another 20 million dollars of federal grant money, which leaves somewhere around 800 million. Approximately half of that is through private donations. Mm -hmm. Many people have given lots of money for improvements at Oklahoma State University and AMA campuses across the state. The other half is paid through student fees. So first project I want to talk about is a project that's in the planning stages, is the east side parking garage. Uh, if you're familiar with the campus, on the east side of the architecture building, we're planning on building somewhere in the neighborhood of an 800 car parking garage at that location. And you kind of see where the, we have surface parking today. Uh, we hope to build and start construction in the next five years, a five-story parking garage in that area to uh, provide significant parking on the east side of campus as well as additional parking during game day. Uh, another project that we're working on is the CAT, College of Engineering, Architecture, and Technology Lab Building. Engineering North, Engineering South, have significant labs in them that were built many decades ago and don't meet current code. And to remodel them to meet current code would be very, very, very expensive. So we're going to build a building, put all those labs in those buildings, very cost effective thing to do, and then remodel Engineering North and Engineering South so we eliminate most of the labs and put in additional classrooms and offices and other meeting areas. So on the west side of architecture, we've got under construction an undergraduate lab, uh, which is uh, four stories, and in the middle has a glass area where we can take unmanned aerial vehicles and fly them and do other tests associated with that type of facility. You kind of see uh, where we are in this. This is uh, project will be completed by mid-August. So this fall, students will be in here uh, doing their lab work and classroom work. This shows the inside as, as of a week ago. Uh, much of the area will have sheetrock and the ceilings will be exposed. So it'll move fairly quickly in terms of completion of construction. The business building shown here in green uh, has just been completed. We're still doing some uh, landscaping work for it. You can kind of see on the left there, the completed building. Uh, on the right, uh, you can see how it is at the end of the uh, Legacy Walk, which is the walkway on the south side of the library. It is in a Neo-Georgian crescent shape, so it meets, it meets our architectural standards, uh, excellent looking from the outside, very modern on the inside. If you haven't been to the new business building, you need to walk inside because there's lots of glass, lots of different types of lighting systems, very, very advanced on technology throughout the building. So I'm showing you a classroom that's also a trading floor. Uh, this is some meeting rooms and other classrooms areas. It has excellent views as well as seven flexible classrooms are located throughout the building. There are flat floors that have tables and chairs that can move so you can arrange them for a lecture type series or you could have uh, four, five, or six students get in different pods and move the furniture themselves 
and then be in class in those pods working together and then separate back out for a lecture. This is some pictures of some meeting rooms down in the basement. The basement is designed to hold a little over 3,000 people during a tornado situation. And they'll get down the basement. We do not have air conditioning and heat that will, if a tornado hits and electricity goes out, we won't have air conditioning or heat, but you'll be alive. And, that, <laughs> and that's what's most important. Uh, in this facility. So you kind of see the different types of mean areas that are down in the basement. Very modern looking. McKnight Center for the Performing Arts is under construction, be completed next summer. Uh, on the left, it shows you the picture of what it looked like eventually. On the right, shows it of this last week. You can get an idea of lots of glass on the north side there. This will have a seating area inside the PAC of 1,100 seats, and we'll have a recital hall right next to it of 300 seats. So you can kind of get an idea of how the construction is going. Michael and Ann Greenwood School of Music is under design. Start construction early next year to be completed in the summer of 2020. That's what the building will look like when it's completed. You can kind of get an idea of how it fits on the south side of the Performing Arts Center that's currently under construction. Hester Street runs right in front of the business building. If you think of Monroe Street, where we have pavers and everything's flat through that area, we hoped in the next five years to tear up the street, redo the utilities, and make it into something that looks like Monroe Street. Uh, Fourth Avenue parking garage was completed about 18 months ago. Uh, holds somewhere in there with 680 vehicles that be, can be used on a daily basis for students, faculty, staff, as well as visitors, and has significant parking for the Performing Arts Center. Cordell Hall demolition. If you've gone by that area here recently, it is gone. We're filling in the hole, and uh, this summer we'll be building parking in that area to be completed uh, sometime right near the beginning of the school. Engineering North 4th and 5th floor are projects we completed in the last year. Essentially, we moved the labs off the fourth and fifth floor and remodeled that, made the hallways bigger, the faculty and staff areas uh, more energy efficient, as well as significant IT in those particular areas. Engineering North second and third floor, we're going to do the same thing starting this summer. We've completed the business building. We've moved people out of the old business building. Now. In a month or so, we're going to move people from Engineering North 2nd and 3rd floor into the old business building so we can gut it and bring it up to date on what we need for this area. And we're going to be focusing on that type of construction over the next 5 to 10 years. You'll see less new buildings and more remodel of buildings. Engineering South remodel. So hopefully in 2 or 3 years, We'll be starting to do the same thing with Engineering South. So we're going to do Engineering North, second, third floor, basement, first floor, and then move over to Engineering South and start remodeling it. If you think about on the east side of Engineering South, there's Engineering South Annex. We'll be tearing that down in the next few months. And then hopefully in a couple of years, we can expand Engineering South uh, to the east there and put in some classrooms in that area. Central plant rebuild. The old central plant was built in the late 1940s and had some original boilers from late 1940s, so it was very energy efficient. That project has now been completed, and the vast, all the heating water, steam, is now coming from the new plant, and over 50% of the chilled water is coming from the new plant, and very energy efficient. It kind of gives you an idea of how that looks. NOC New Building, Northern Oklahoma College, we have an agreement with them where we have OSU students that take their classes 
and their tuition fees are less than Oklahoma State University. They can stay in the dorms, and they've been in the old the Cowboy Mall, which is something that's real old and needs to be torn down. So they're building a new building immediately north of the Monroe Street parking garage to be open for this fall. New ag building, we're in the preliminary ideas of building a new ag building. Uh, we're just programming it. It'll be north of the Henry Bell Research Center. The old ag building is very, very old and worn out. We hope to build, raise enough money to build a new one and then tear down the old ag building and have parking and a plaza in that area. College of Human Sciences, in addition to the north side, completed in the last year, uh, new Taylor's Dining. If you haven't eaten there, you need to go there. My suggestion is you call beforehand and get reservations because it is full most of the time. It is, is a very, very popular place. Uh, new teaching greenhouses. Uh, next to the swimming pool, right in the south of the swimming pool, there's greenhouses that are very, very old and uh, north of Iba Hall, we're going to be planning uh, new greenhouses. You see in the background, Iba Hall. Uh, that start, will start construction this summer, be completed next summer. Uh, very nice area that will have a green area uh, for plantings outside, as well as the greenhouse will have planted inside, and uh, be a very nice area for teaching, uh, as well as a very nice open area in the interior part of the campus. Demolish Kerr Drummond. We're vacating Kerr Drummond. We'll be vacated by the end of this semester. Will not be ever used again. We're doing some analysis to figure out how to tear these buildings down and hopefully in the next one, two or three years we can tear it down and then put some surface parking there. The eventual master plan shows a significant parking garage, uh, any, somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,500 parking spaces uh, to go in that area. Uh, we just don't have any money to build that right now. New soccer complex is under construction to be completed this fall. You need to drive by, it really looks fabulous, uh, really shaping up very well. Cleveland Street is a street on the, near the west side of campus. It essentially has a lot of parking just right on the street. We have some safety concerns with that. We hope to make it a uh, flat street with bioswells and uh, bicycle lanes along this area to make it safer for vehicles to move through this area as well as improve the environment through the bioswell and improve bike traffic through this area. Geology core building up in the northwest quadrant of the campus. Um, geology needs a new building to store all their core samples and to have teaching out in that area so they properly process that and teach all the students how to do that. That's presently under design to start construction near the end of this calendar year and be completed in about a year. USIL. I don't remember what USIL stands for. Oh, it's right here. Unmanned System Innovation Lab. <laughs> Oklahoma State University is in the top three in the nation in terms of research in unmanned aerial vehicles. In fact, uh, we have three different airstrips for unmanned aerial vehicles located throughout the state. And, and this is an area that's being built so they can continue that great research effort in that area. It's going to be built in the northwest quadrant of the campus. Just start construction, just putting in the sanitary sewer line and getting the uh, structural pad ready for the building itself. CVHS classroom building. So it's a College of Veterinary what is Health sciences. Health sciences. You, you got it. 
So we're taking out a parking lot because it seems like that's the best place to put buildings these days. But taking out a parking lot and building three classrooms in that area that can hold up to 130 students apiece. Right now we're we were below 90. We've been authorized to move to 106. We hope to authorize to get moved to above 120, maybe close to 130 students in the vet med area. And this will be a building that will provide that classroom for many decades to come in the veterinary science area. Fire protection publication office expansion. As, as many of you know, I believe it's my opinion we have the top fire protection education program in, in the world. We have lots of people come from all over the world to take continuing education here at Oklahoma City University. We also put together manuals and books on fire protection and they need to expand because their selling of books has expanded, their publication expanded, and they're making enough money to build this new building with money they just make off of their educational material that they put together. So that's been completed, they've moved in. Multi-species building is nearing completion of construction and should be operational sometime this fall. New intramural fields on Western Avenue has been completed and this spring they have been playing all sorts of different sports. It's designed to have soccer on it or softball and, or rugby. And there's two other sports that I can't remember off the top of my head that is all designed to be on this facility. It's designed where there's lights going around the outside so you can rearrange all the fields and all the lights are LED lights that are actually have an app and a company in Texas, we can do the app and they op actually operate the lights so we can have lights turned on or turned off by the iPhone and having the proper app with the proper code. I personally do not have that code, <laughs> but, <laughs> but other people, the more responsible have that code. We, we do have gravel parking out there as well as ADA parking with concrete. The Dairy Center is located on the west side of campus and it's just been completed. And Jan, you may have to tell me this. It's a stalling barn. Does anybody know what a stalling barn is? It's a barn that the cows go to and, and are there before and after they're milked. And the idea is that you make them comfortable to the point where they give more milk. In fact, we have a few automatic back scratchers for the cows. I thought that was very interesting. Being an engineer, I thought that was very interesting where they actually go up and, and they know what place they want to be scratched and it automatically scratches them. And the, the, since this has been in operation, the milk production has gone up 25% because we have happy cows at Oklahoma State University. <laughs> We, we also have built a building out there to house six students because you need people out there to, even though the cows are milked with a milking device, you have to feed them, connect the milking device, other things. So there, we built a new facility for, to house those six students. Animal physiology is, is an area we're looking at in terms of expanding our research in that area. 100% we think will be funded through the private sector and we're in preliminary design on that particular uh, area. Foundation Seed is a building we just completed. Uh, we are one of the lead organizations in the world since the 1930s in doing research on seed and seed production. In fact, we have our own set of seeds that we sell and make money off of so we can do more research on seeds. Uh, they 100% funded this uh, foundation seed stock for the storage of those seeds and we're, about, and we're under design, about ready to construct 
a seed cleaning facility right next to it. My last project I want to talk about is the baseball field. It is uh, currently under construction. They're in the process of moving the dirt around. And my understanding is that today or tomorrow, they're supposed to start drilling piers. So it's under construction and uh, be completed so they can play baseball in it in 2020. So that's an idea of how it looked like when it's all completed. Uh, any questions? Hmm. Do you guys operate on a, it says long range, is it, a, is it five years or is it just more? Um, we have a five year and a 25 year plan. The 25 year plan looks at what all could be on the campus and is probably more than we could fund in 25 years. But it gives you, if we want to expand things significantly, we could do that. We work on a five-year plan in terms of this is what we think we can do in the next five years. A lot of it is based upon if a private person comes in and says they want to give several million dollars to build this building, that comes to a high priority to build that building. Makes sense. Well, <clears throat> well, I would just like to thank Mike. I always enjoy his presentation. You usually do it what, once a year, once every yes, year sir. and a half, something like that. And always very informative. I'm sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate your time. And we'll get on to the next agenda item. Thank you. Thanks, thank Mike. you, sir.